The Final Fantasy VII Remake was a divisive game amongst the fanbase, and continues to be even now considering the way it ended. However, if you watched my review you'll know that I loved the game, and have been eagerly awaiting more since I beat it. Luckily I didn't have to wait all that long as the first and only DLC, Intermission, was released exclusively for the Sony PlayStation 5 on June 10th, as part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate PS5 port. Whilst the base game also has updates to things such as textures, like the door that everyone and their Dark Star liked to complain about, the DLC stands on its own as an additional chapter featuring everyone's favourite ninja, Yuffie Kisaragi. Wait, stop, woke, psh, whoa! <laughs> Grease lightning, I hear you say as you direct a karate chop toward my face. Now first, I must advise you that the art of karate and ninja are not synonymous. Secondly, I hear your queries and frustrations. Yes, Yuffie was not in Midgar in the original game, but she could have been. Hear me out. Those familiar with Final Fantasy VII know that the earliest that Yuffie could be recruited was in the forest near Junon, as she was an optional character. Additionally, she could be a pain in the ass to recruit not only from her low encounter rate, but also the fact that if you chose the wrong dialogue response, or tried to save before conversing with her after winning the battle, she would run away, meaning you'd have to try and find her again. But for all the blood fest it took to recruit her, she didn't have a huge role to play in the main game because she was an optional character. We also didn't receive any real backstory as to why she was out roaming far from her hometown of Wutai either. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission places us in the shoes of Yuffie as she enters the outskirts of the Midgar slums where she is planning to meet up with the main branch of Avalanche in order to gain information about entering the Shinra building so that she can steal some materia. The additional two chapters that comprise the DLC take place between Chapter 7 and Chapter 12 of the main game in which we play exclusively as Yuffie and her companion Sonen. I personally think that the appearance of Yuffie here was a great way to introduce her and tie her more strongly into the narrative, considering that she plays a bigger role in other games within the greater works of the Final Fantasy VII compilation. Yuffie is bubbly, fearless, and boastful of her abilities, which puts her youth on clear, tranquil display. After all, she was the youngest of the original cast. Even though we only get two chapters, during that time we are able to learn about what drives her through her interactions with the people of the Sector 7 slums, and especially the members of Avalanche that assist with her mission. Joining her quest is a new character, Sonon, who trained as a ninja beneath her father. His often stoic demeanour plays off Yuffie's bashful one, which creates a good character dynamism. Where Yuffie will heedlessly rush into danger, Sonon is more guarded and purposeful with his actions. When I first heard about him, I was skeptical as to how he'd fit into the already established narrative without changing the lore, but he was inserted so perfectly that he elevates Yuffie as a character and makes me eager to see where her adventures go from here. As you are running around the environment, Yuffie can throw her gigantic shuriken to break boxes in the distance, which Cloud certainly wasn't able to do with his big ass buster sword. She can also use her weapon to toggle distant switches, which added a level of dynamism to some of the dungeons, making their gauntlet more interesting to explore. Additionally, there were no narrow corridors for her to shimmy along like Cloud & Co, so everything was kept at a pretty fast pace, matching the speed of the combat. Speaking of combat, there are a few new additions. As expected, Yuffie plays a lot differently to the other characters, and unlike in the main game where you can switch on the fly to using other party members, you cannot directly control Sonon, though you can issue his ATB commands. Pressing square will have Yuffie attack the nearest enemy close range, but if you hold the button down, she will place some distance between herself and the enemy. Pressing triangle will throw her shuriken, and change the square button into ninjutsu. What I enjoyed most about this is that she can learn a weapon ability later that uses ATB to transform the elemental property of her ninjutsu, meaning that you don't have to worry about expending MP to tackle enemy weaknesses. Also, she can use ninjutsu whilst in the air, so you don't have to worry about aerial combat downtime, one of the biggest foes of our other companions. Finally, pressing L2 will activate synergy between the characters, at the cost of the charge speed of Sonon's ATB Gorge, this ability allows Sonon and Yuffie to execute group attacks which can be quite flashy and be the doom of the living. 
For those that are combat weary from the main title and perhaps want something a little different to do, there is the additional minigame Fort Condor based on the events in the main game, which personally is a little shameful for Midgar's residents to be capitalising on an ongoing war and the misfortune of others, but okay, Fort Condor is a tower defence game that sees you facing off against a single opponent in a two lane foray. Both you and your opponent have two smaller forts and one large one. And the objective is to use the rocks as a paper system to place units that can break through the narrow corridors and deflate the reigning condors atop their towers before the timer runs out. Be careful, as this game can be very addictive. In addition to playing the game, you can also find additional units for it throughout the slums, as well as in shops. And, just like Materia, Yuffie is going to want to collect them all. Additionally, there is the Happy Total side quest. Originally appearing as a Total Paradise Flyer quest in the original game, that saw you finding six flyers around the entire world that were sometimes really well hidden, in Intermission you can find flyers that have been stuck on walls and return them to the Happy Total Promoter for a prize. The flyers are all easy to find as they are positioned near gramophones that play variations of the Happy Total theme, which is probably one of my favourite aspects of this questline. Graphically, while some of the environments from the base game were reused, I did appreciate the additional areas that were landscaper, which particularly filled out Sector 7 more. I thought the design of Yuffie was faithful to the original game, and I really dug Sonnen's design too. Whilst the supporting Avalanche cast looked a little bland in the promotional art that was first displayed before the game was released, I felt that they fit well within the game world and didn't seem out of place or bland at all, really. Intermission also added a lot more cat models, which made me very happy. The music was extremely varied, from remixes of Yuffie's theme to six different genres of the Happy Total theme which always made me excited to discover them, to the Cowboy Bebop-esque heavy jazz tune when chasing Zaji. Everything just worked. If I was to pick my favourite track from this selection, it would have to be the one titled Seeing Melfi Again. It's an original track and has no bearing on the original game's narrative, but it just set the mood for the part of the DLC that it appeared in, and had me tearing up exactly what good storytelling paired with great music should do. The voice acting also knocked it out of the park, and I must give kudos to Square Enix for casting both Yuffie and Sonan with Asian voice talent in Susie Young and Alex Lee. If you are one of the lucky individuals that was able to procure a PS5 and have not yet played Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission, then what are you waiting for? I can honestly tell you that it is worth the investment, not only for getting to play as Yuffie, but also seeing a different side of Midgar that we just didn't get to see with the main cast. Additionally, once you beat the game, you'll be treated to a scene of what the main cast is up to after the events of the ending of Remake, which includes yet another mystery. With the tweaks to the battle system and the implementation of aerial combat, as well as Fort Condor to keep you occupied, you'll lose a sweet four to six hours with this DLC. So what are you waiting for? Get in some of that sweet all creation. By the way, is there any game that you have played the DLC of which just complemented the main game perfectly? Let me know in the comments! This has been Venwa with a review of Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission for the Sony PlayStation 5. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe for more great JRPG content. As always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care of yourselves, and bye bye for now!